Welcome to the Ink Pole Podcast. The visual new, I don't know, approach we're going to fuck with. Uh, you were my second podcast guest ever? Is that second or third. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. W- why not do this with Sean? Yeah, yeah. Um, Sean's yeah. got a serious question for me. So let's I do, see what yeah. We've been friends for 15, 18 years. Yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you... Do you ever feel like I was a bad friend or was trying to shut you out or, or cancel you? Because you talk about a lot of people you've known who have burned you. And I worry that you saw me as a guy that ever burned you. And I, I don't want to be that guy. No, I, I mean, you're not that guy. And I did for a moment have that, but I addressed yeah. it with you. Yeah. It was because um, when you were with Essential Sequential. Yep. Yeah. And you were saying, I, I don't remember the exact words, but the idea was like, Sean's a different caliber artist from us, so, mm-hmm. there, you know, what's happening here? Right. And, and that, I was like, fuck, that sucks. Because uh, that's the one bit in our history that I worry about, and I don't, and I, I, I think there was a misunderstanding, but I don't want you to think that, I don't want you to be holding back and biting your tongue for the rest of our relationship. I, I'm not, no, thinking no. Thinking I'm some we, cocky asshole or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I got, I got like, um, like I'm going to back off of Sean for a while, but then we spoke. Because I, I caught it because right. I, Jason, who used to be our art dealer, and everything is cool now. Jason and I are friends again and everything. But there was a miscommunication, and I don't know if you brought it up to me or if Jason I did. I did, because okay. I hit a point. Yeah. Um, it was right, it was probably eight months before COVID where comics had just like dried up for me. Yeah. And, and I was like reaching out to people, like anyone and everyone I knew to just see if I could find a job somewhere. I had no money coming in and yeah. I was yeah. in bad, bad position. And then I started thinking like, I'm holding a lot of resentment mm-hmm. and a lot of people were wrong to me and I just let them do that. And I was like, I, I want to speak freely and yeah. see like if I can heal this and move forward in the friendship or, or, or see what. And yeah. so you, you, that's what I emailed you under the context of, yeah. of like, Hey man, like, I gotta be honest with you. Here's what I heard. I've been mm-hmm. annoyed, but yeah. I want us to talk through this and, and maybe like get to the other side of this. Right, Cause yeah, we yeah. do have a long history together. Right. Yeah. I'm glad you did, because I didn't know that this happened. Um, and uh, what it boiled down to was our art dealer, Jason, who was taking on a lot of artists, uh, asked me, do you think Sean should be part of our collective? And he told you that I said no. And I, I said, Sean's not the same caliber. I don't think he should be here, <clears throat> which is not what I said to him. But because Jason was pissed at me, understandably, we're all human. That's how it came out to you. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, then maybe I don't know. What did you say? It and and I got to make sure I'm sure. quoting Jason right. I, I'm, but go ahead and tell me what you did say. So he asked me a few times in our friendship, and I was Jason's best man at his wedding. We were pretty tight. And when I left him, it was because I had all this new Batman pages I was going to sell, and I wanted to renegotiate the percentages of what he would take. Because he represents Juanjo Gordino, who makes a lot. And I didn't want to pay X percent anymore, and I wanted to renegotiate with Jason. But because he's a good friend, it got weird. Um, he never tried to renegotiate, so I just bailed, which he took as a personal attack. And after being best man at his wedding, things got weird. And again, like this is all sorted out. I'd be telling you the exact same story if he was sitting next to you. Um, but during our friendship, he said, do you, what do you think about bringing on Sean? And I said, man, you told me that Oh, when, this is before I came on. Yeah. Right, okay, yes. Yeah, you, you only have eight artists, and I liked Jason because he only had eight artists. It was right, like lower right. artists, higher attention, or higher focus, or whatever. Because I was with another art dealer that had between 40 and 70. And I was with that same art yeah, dealer. Yeah, we both you. ditched him, yeah. yeah. 
And uh, when he said, what do you think about taking on Sean? And I said, well, Sean's a friend. Like, he clicks really well. He knows everybody. He's an asset. Like, absolutely. And I said, if you're asking me, is, is he working as much as Dave Johnson, then he's not. So if you're trying to get the same people all on the same level, then I don't know if Sean is there yet. To the best of my knowledge, that's all I ever said. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I think maybe I misunderstood the timeline then. I, I had... Well, it came up a few times, but I've generally okay. always boiled down to that. Okay. I never said, Sean's not like us, Sean's not with us, Sean's not on the same level. I never said anything like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm uh, thinking it now, though. You're thinking it now? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. Um, with your snow hat and your glasses on the inside. <laughs> Is the world yellow to you? <laughs> Uh, yeah. These glasses bug Eric and Eddie. Yeah, they bugging you. They bugging me too. All right. <laughs> Score for the glasses. <laughs> but no, I'm glad that we, you you let me know. We worked it out because I'd rather me too. have the drama out and just have it out and just move past it. Honestly, right. I didn't want to like quiet. Like I didn't want to just walk away from. Like I owned my part in things by being like, well, I never spoke up, so it's it's not fair to put it all on the other person if you didn't speak up. And I was like, I need to speak up for myself. Like, I'd hit that yeah. point in life where I was like, I don't speak up for myself yeah. enough. I mean, if Jason hesitated on taking you aboard because of me, then I definitely owe both of you an apology because that's not what I meant at all. Right. I, mean, I guess I had assumed it was after I was already on board, but what you're saying makes more sense. I don't think that was. Like, I, when you're on, I never, I would never yeah, say, Yeah, I, mean, I remember I came on, you're like, oh, dude, we're going to have such a blast. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I try to be very open and genuine and like who you see on camera is who I am in person. Same with you, by the way. Right. I don't know which camera is mine. That one? That's yes. you. Okay, cool. But uh, there's a very, there's a big lack of integrity and honesty in comics, and there's not a lot of men in the industry either, and I consider you one of them. <laughs> With a lot of integrity, I and I, would, I would hate to think integrity that... Integrity is a, is a rare quality amongst this industry. Yeah. I think so, too. But I really, I got so upset, like I offended, like I hurt my, my older brother in a lot of ways. Oh, I mean, you've done so much to, you help, I mean, I don't know if I would be in comics if you hadn't come to me at a, a club meeting of sequential art and told me about <laughs> Sandy, uh, Megacon. Right, that's right. And I had no idea what a show was. You took me with you and Andrew and Chris Bruner that's and Rico right. and um, some other people. We, and like I to think to fast forward that and to think that I would ever say that ab about you or your art, like, oh man, the, I am so annoyed that I somehow led to you thinking that, even if it was a misunderstanding, you know. Well, look, I, I mean, it's in the past. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, so let it go. All right. Cheers. <laughs> what else can we hash out? I don't know. But this is the Ink Pulp Podcast. This is the Ink Pulp Podcast. Comics. Hip hop. Life. 